We've arrived, crossing over the border from British Columbia, Canada, into the belly of the beast, the heartland of traditional energy production, Alberta, Canada, home to the oil sands. We're about to find out whether they're embracing or resisting technological innovation and the electrification of transportation. We're gonna go out and look at the opportunities, the challenges, and whatever else we face on the road. So come along for the journey. Let's go and get totally trucked up. Here's my very first stop experiencing electric chargers here in Alberta. After crossing over from BC, the chargers right down at the end of this closed road. And there's no second road, it's a single road. So I've got to go down somewhere else and try to go around to get to the back of this road. Let's see how that goes. This is why I wanted to get ceramic stuff uh, before this trip started. Here's to paint chips. Well, it required a bit of work. We did a little bit of a loop to loop. I got to the charger and of course I've crossed over. It's like crossing over into another country between some of our provinces. It's an entirely different network, of course, called the ABB. And I went to download the amp. <laughs> There's no cell service. Luckily, the truck that I just bought has three months of included wireless something or other and it's still active and it just so happens that that system has one bar it took me a little while but i was able to download this app and it's still telling me that it's disconnected and not working it's kind of like flow charger and some of these other where you have to load up the card with money um, which kind of sucks because i'll never use it again so i just put 10 bucks on there so this is my first experience it's not bad because it's running over here on the screen it tells us that we're clipping along at a big 45 kilowatts. But I don't need a lot here, actually. I don't know, now that I've done it and I've put 10 bucks in it, I'm probably gonna try to get 10 bucks worth, but it doesn't tell you on the screen how much you're spending. I'll just probably stay until it tells me I can't stay any longer because I used up my 10 bucks and I'm gonna take off. Thank you to Birch Hills for getting this in here. And this is a wonderful step. It means that I know I can travel through Alberta from this side and at least get down, we'll see as far as about Slave Lake. So that's a big, big positive coming over from British Columbia. This one was a tough one to find. I am in the community of, I don't even know. So this is uh, charger number two. It doesn't show up on PlugShare at the location that PlugShare says it's at because there's one level two charger over at the town office. And this is at the regional district or county office. And this is where the fast charger is. But I knew there was a fast charger here, but I did drive around and I found it. Unfortunately, see this little code Kona sitting here. Somebody locally or staying over or works here just decided they own the charging unit and they plugged in and I took a screenshot just in case they come back. Their car's been sitting here for like three hours not charging. The best part is, of course, they're blocking the whole charger. So I had to take my truck and drive over the Meridian so I could plug in and charge. Like this is the kind of thing that just sets this whole thing back if people aren't courteous. And that's why there's idle charges. And I hope this person gets freaking nailed with idle charges because three hours would be a shit pile of idle charges. Anyway, nice. I'm about another two hours behind already in Alberta on my first two chargers. So not exactly batting a thousand, but I'm charging. It's just gone from bad to worse. I can't get to Fort McMurray. Nobody with an EV can get to Fort McMurray. I can charge up in Slave Lake, and everything south of there seems to be full of chargers. We're gonna find out soon enough. I'm going to Slave Lake now to charge up, and then I'm heading south. And everybody who has an EV or an EV truck should do the same, and probably that's what that part of Alberta wants. My only opportunity to get there is to pull in at the local Ford dealership, and according to Ford's network those things should be available to evs all the time so i decided i better call the dealership first to make sure that before i drive all the way there because it's my only 
option. Every municipality, every single one of them, after that has nothing. Those who have taken the route to get up there, they've had to use wall chargers. Well, to use a wall charger, you better be camping. The Ford dealership, when I called, said, we turn them off. If you don't get here when a salesperson's here, you're not getting a charge. Thank, thank you, dealership uh, Kosh Ford in Athabasca. Thank you for looking toward the future. It's pretty bad that all the other Ford dealerships I've come across have either a DC fast charger on site or they're accommodating all the time for you. I guess not when you start heading towards oil country. Something suddenly changes. And I've got nothing against oil and gas. In fact, a video is coming up on the fact that we need oil and gas. There's no threat from electric trucks to the oil and gas industry. Not for some time. Change of plans. Slave Lake itself is massive. It's big, and it's, you've got, it's called Lesser Slave Lake because there's also Great Slave Lake and Great Bear Lake in the uh, Northwest Territories, and those are the size of the, the Great Lakes. Totally different landscape. It's amazing how fast you get used to mountains and hills, and then you come back to a place like this, and you're going, oh, my God, is it flat, and we haven't even got to Big Sky Country yet, but I can't believe how much of the bush has been cleared out. When I was a boy, when I grew up here, the roads were really narrow and gravel and hardtop. It wasn't a lot of hardtop, mostly gravel. Very dangerous roads. And it's just bush on either side of the roads. But I'm starting to sound like one of those old farts. Hey, remember back in the day? Hey, yeah, we uh, used to ride on camels. We brought them in for the for, for hunting for jade. Ah, I'm just making shit up. I have no idea what I'm saying. One thing we can count on, it's always constant, change. And if you resist change, you'll lose. Well, that's the last stop for the evening coming through. Thank you, Slave Lake. Not only do they have a fast charger, it's a fast, fast charger right here in the town center. Pretty freaking happy about this. In fact, all the way through from Dawson Creek, that one line through north central Alberta, no problem at all. This is a fourth charger that's been available. They were difficult because all three of them were on different systems, but now I have apps for all of them. So if I was to come here all the time or if I lived in Alberta, I'd have those just like I would BC Hydro. And here we've got flow. And usually in BC, flows are dog slow. Here, they got a really fast one and it worked perfectly. Just started up, bang, no problem at all. There's a bit of icing going on where some large diesel trucks like to block these spots and very respectful here. The site was left open, except for the, uh, <laughs> the little non-EV scooter. But outside of that, it's awesome. Time to pack it in, nicely done. Thinking ahead. I'm not missing my lost trip to Fort Mac. I think I can handle decompressing and getting you some videos instead. I am back on the road after a lovely rest in a beautiful cabin next to Slave Lake, next to the river that drains into it. That was exactly what I needed. We are heading now from Slave Lake to Westlock and we're following this line right out of BC from Dawson Creek. It's kind of going from west to east and then we're gonna dogleg south to Westlock and then down to Edmonton, to Calgary and, and south. Half of the province we're not touching because there's no DC fast chargers north of this line. And you suddenly come to appreciate living in British Columbia, what BC Hydro offers, because I really knocked the snot out of it in previous videos, because I'm really tired of the slow fast charger approach. However, frequency is as important and consistency is as important. And you can come to appreciate why Tesla has done so well, because there's that consistency there's that ubiquitous nature of their charging networks, and this is key. In Alberta, so far, I've had to use three separate apps for three separate providers, so I'm hoping I don't have to download 12 more apps to get across the province. A lot of them don't have a credit card payment option. In fact, none of them, now that I think about it. We've just come off our junction at Highway 2 and 44. Highway 2 would take us to Athabasca and then up to Fort McMurray. We're going to dogleg to Edmonton via Westlock. Keep in mind that the route that I've taken through Alberta is based upon where I can go. 
that's not a good way to travel. If I wanted to go to the east end of Alberta, northeast, I can't. If I want to go north of anything Highway 2, I can't. If I wanted to come off of 44 here and maybe dogleg over to another community, I better have fully charged up in Slave Lake or Westlock to do so. However, a large proportionate share of the population of Alberta doesn't live up here. So the case can be made that that's just not a worthwhile endeavor. It's not an infrastructural cost that makes a lot of sense. I'm excited a little later on because we're going to be seeing something that's very unique and the fact that it's in Alberta really excites me. I was really hoping on taking this trip and going down the eastern side from Edmonton rather than the old Rocky Mountain side central Edmonton Red Deer Calgary and then veering off going into the Rocky Mountains but the other side is just as gorgeous you know Drumheller Dinosaur Provincial Park right down through the the uh, Red uh, Red Deer Canyon Hannah Brooks that area man I mean blue sky country, country like you've never seen you get these expansive views that would blow your mind Horseshoe Canyon it's stellar I can't get you there I wish I could maybe on the way back I am sitting here in my hotel room and I felt I needed to do a little bit of an edit to add into my Alberta trucked up stop because I gotta give props where props are due. I technically, when I originally planned the trip, could have made it all the way down the eastern side along the Saskatchewan border in Alberta, all the way from Cold Lake to uh, Lloydminster, down to Wainwright, and then all the way down Drumheller, go all the way to Medicine Hat. However, there were two chargers down and the distances are nail biting already. You're making quite a leap to try to stitch these things together. So it's not quite there, but it's getting there. So some credit's gotta be given here. Where there's a hole that causes a big problem is in Hannah, Alberta. It's this one little stop and the only charger there is a restricted charger. It's not open to the public. It's only by, I think, a dealership for their customers. So. That is a big problem. On the other side, the western side, where I didn't go, is technically I could get up to Fort Vermilion. When I came across from Dawson Creek, I could have gone, rather than me trying to get to Fort McMurray, my original plan, I could have gone to Peace River and then gone all the way from Peace River North, getting very close to the border back into the Northwest Territories near a place called Fort Vermilion and High Level. But again, from Peace River is very similar to going from Slave Lake to Fort McMurray. The good news for Fort Vermilion is they have four available fast chargers, whereas Fort McMurray, a place of a much larger population, has squat. So once you get there, you can get back. We've arrived in Westlock, Alberta. I remember coming here as a little boy after picking berries or going hunting with dad for geese and ducks, sitting in a swamp in the middle of a field summer waiting for something to fly over your head. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, the middle of bush being eaten alive by mosquitoes. Oh, the mosquitoes, I remember the mosquitoes. It's kind of strange being back, but this place has got a lot bigger. Of course, everything's got a lot bigger. That's what happens when you age. Well, it's nice to see this. We've got ourselves a Hummer EV at the Chevy dealership plugged in. That's pretty darn cool. Nice to see out here in Alberta and Westlock. I don't care whether they're going for efficiency or inefficiency or whatever. It's nice to see an electric truck in all its glory, this is basically everything decadent you could possibly put in an electric truck. This has got it. And it's plugged into the flow. Now the flow is listed as it's on a public fast charger system in Flow's network. And they've got this one plugged in. So I'm gonna go in and talk to them and see if I can get myself plugged in here. The folks at Westlock GM were awesome. 
uh, talked a lot about the RST and the Work Truck 4 and the Work Truck 3, and how they've been having trouble getting them in. Like I talked about this before in my, my video that I did on why I chose the Flash over every other vehicle. I really like the RST, but trying to get your hands on one is really difficult. And the way the system works with a GM and the dealerships isn't working for the customer because I put in a pre-order over two years ago and I still can't get anyone to call me about my pre-order. It's like they have to look in their system and see if they can get one and whether they're allowed one from the manufacturer to the dealership. So the dealerships are kind of, they got their hands tied. But I got to say, that Hummer is a pretty cool looking beast. It really is, but a beast is the right word. We're going to charge up here and then I'm going to walk over and find my truck top stop and leave this to charge. This has to have been my favorite little truck top stop so far here in Westlock, Alberta. Carrie's Bakery and Cafe. It's a former church. If you're ever traveling through Alberta on your EV truck adventure of your own, this is a place to check out, man. Food is excellent. Coffee is excellent. In fact, I'm going to unplug my lightning from the GM dealership and I'm coming back here and fueling up before I head for Edmonton because holy crap is it good coffee. The roads have improved dramatically since leaving Westlock. It's a bumpy roller coaster kind of thing going on. Feels like you're always going over, you know, those cattle tracks on the highway. But it's getting better and they're doing lots of road work here. What's really weird is as I drive, because I've been a mountain guy for so long, to look 40 kilometers and see Edmonton. That's just kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know, it's just surreal. What I think is funny is now that we're on this massive twinned Highway 16 heading into Edmonton, the speed limit jumped up to 110 kilometers an hour or 70 miles an hour, and it's the slowest I've driven all day because it's just traffic. It's a first. Right now, I'm driving hands-free. It's kind of a weird sensation. All I gotta do is look ahead. It's doing everything. I am not driving my truck. My truck is driving my truck. I was coming through here and I had on uh, adaptive cruise with lane keeping. And what it does is as soon as it picks up that you are in a blue cruise zone that's been mapped, it just can switch. And it, it just did. It's my first experience with it. It's cool and it's giving great spacing between other vehicles and it's doing a great job of lane keeping and doing all kinds of really cool stuff but its speed sign recognition system still has bugs. It lets people in, this guy just cut me off, lets me in no problem, lets him in no problem, and it is following my route down 16 here <laughs> really well. Like, it's kind of freaky. So I can see why Tesla people get off on this, but right now I'm not relaxed, I don't trust it worth crap, but it's letting, see, that somebody just tried to cut in and it, let them do things. Now suddenly I'm dropping here again to 70 kilometers an hour. No one's doing that. And one thing about Edmonton that I forgot is all of the speed limits on the major routes are uh, routes. Uh, thank you, American chucked up folk. Is it's photo enforced everywhere. If you speed on any roads around Edmonton, you're getting a ticket. One thing is for certain about Edmonton, it is one clean city and the roads are really good. It, it is a very beautiful city actually. It's got great river valley, lots of parks, good cycle route. And you can be in the middle of a city and still have a lot of parkland, kind of like Vancouver. I mean, there's no comparison between Edmonton and Vancouver, but for where Edmonton is, Edmonton's done a really good job. You know, all the boulevards are treed, there's large reserves, tree reserves kept in every area. Like you're driving through right now, I'm heading towards White Ave part of the city. And it's just got this feeling that you're kind of driving along between city and park. It gets dark though here and it gets cold. That difference by being where this is latitudinally, um, it makes a difference to the amount of daylight you get in the middle of winter. This is what we've been waiting for. You know what this is? This is a fuel station, a gas station for EVs. Right here in the center of Alberta. What a bold and innovative 
and forward thinking move. I'm so impressed to see this right in the heart of Edmonton. You know, everyone talks about oil country, but I don't see any of these in the rest of Canada. But this guy's got plans. He plans on doing a lot more of these. So we've got our trucked up stop right here at Charge Stop EVs in Edmonton, right off of White. And I'm charging over here. Let's take a look at this. This is freaking impressive. ChemPower is a Dutch company, I believe, and they're basically putting these out like ChargePoint Tesla. You can see that they're streamlined. All of the main hardware, the big ass stuff is right over there. That's where all the action's happening. But what's really cool is you can charge two units. You don't have to go either or. Somebody else parks right here, just like Tesla. It's not one or the other, it's both. So let's take a look at what I'm charging at. So I am already at 74%, so my, my batteries are warm. I just came off, I didn't precondition for this place, and I'm charging at 119. You can see 75%. So I'm near the top end of things. I didn't really need to charge, but it's so freaking good. I mean, why not? Now these are coming in, these chem powers at 150 and 150 a side right here. So you can choose based upon what your vehicle can do. But look at this. You've got 150 and 150. What's the difference? One's on an 800 volt. That's what we're talking about. It's actually splitting up. You can do both. One thing it is lacking, and I think it's got more to do with square footage than anything else. What don't we see here? We don't see a pull through charger option if you're pulling a trailer. But here's the thing. This is first of many of what they're planning on setting up as franchises with these across the country. Stand by for more information on this cool location. We are on the road heading for Calgary. I had an absolutely great meeting. I'm gonna call it for the night. We're back across Alberta right after I get some wink eye. I woke up to a beautiful sunrise and a truck almost full, 70% charged here in Airdrie, Alberta. Thanks to finding Best Western Plus here in Airdrie, the only hotel that seemed to have a overnight charger for EVs. Thank you for being uh, a forward-thinking hotel. It is unfortunate that um, the technology hasn't really taken off with a lot of the hospitality chains because there's an opportunity there, as every EV owner knows. The unit was only giving me a total draw of around 3,400, so it was a 15-amp circuit. And that's not the best, but it's better than just being into a wall unit. We could see more hotels putting in 1450s or actually wired in units that charge fast level two. They're gonna get a lot of business if they do, especially with the number of electric vehicles that are selling now. Calgary has done a lot with their roads. It used to be quite a mess to get in and out of the city. Now they got this stony trail. They've got this huge loop and interconnective network. And we're talking six lanes eight lanes divided i got to give a lot of credit here though the smog you can see the effect of all these trucks and all these cars because the smog over the city i can taste it i can smell it of course i'm a country boy so i pick this stuff up really easily but there's i mean there's a lot of people here but i can just imagine what would happen if you didn't have all that gasoline being burned and all that diesel being burned what would happen to the air quality and I think once you live in it and you've always been in it, you don't think about it. But we know statistically it lowers your lifespan. In some studies, they say up to three years is knocked off your life from pollution. That's not a small amount. This is quite nice. Just heading out of Calgary, pulled off of the main highway, pulled into Metro Ford. Thank you, Metro Ford. Very nice setup they've got here. 240 kilowatt chargers my truck can't handle 240 and then if they split if you got two vehicles on like one on each side you're doing 120 a piece so i'm charging it my f-150 lightning maximum thank you so much this is a great service here in calgary it seems to be open to anyone which is really cool as well many of the other dealerships and other brands they don't do that they restrict it like audi restricts it volkswagen restricts it chrysler restricts it there's been so many restricted ones that I found at dealerships. I think it's very dealer specific. You just pay by credit card, super easy. I just plugged in, tapped with my phone, boom, I'm charging. That is good stuff.
Thank you, Calgary. Thank you, Metro Ford. Got to give them a plug when they do things right. We are now leaving Calgary, heading for Lethbridge. It's been a pleasant surprise as this part of Alberta that basically from Slave Lake, West Lock, down to Edmonton, St. Albert, Mournville, uh, all of that area, my old stomping grounds, through to Edmonton, Red Deer, Calgary, and most certainly in the south, there's no problem as far as EV chargers. That is really cool. I haven't had lunch. I was hoping on maybe grabbing something, but there's not a lot of anything. So I just did a little side trip, popping into the community of Okotoks, Alberta. Gonna grab myself a quick bite, get back on the road. I missed my turn. And when you're on a highway with no pullouts, no turnarounds, you miss your turn, you're adding 15 minutes to your trip, which I just did. And then, because I'm driving as fast as I'm legally allowed to drive, I'm burning through the electrons much faster than expected, and there's no stopping, there's no braking. I've got to get to my destination, and I've got 87 kilometers left. It could be fun. <laughs> We're gonna find out how good Lethbridge is. I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna be a positive person. I'm just watching my 87 now, says 85. It's dropping a little fast. I think we're gonna get there okay, but some lights are gonna come on. I've driven from Calgary to here, which is about four hours of highway driving at 70 miles an hour, 110 kilometers an hour, give or take. And I would have stopped the charge. But if I stopped the charge, there's no way I would make the time. I am charging at Electrify Canada here in Lethbridge, Alberta. Made it to my trucked up stop at Saunders Coffee, which was awesome. They closed at four. We didn't have a lot of time, but we had some time to head off to Medicine Hat, Alberta. What a cool name. There's tons of chargers. I could have chosen from Tesla, Electrify Canada, Flow. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Nice work here in Lethbridge. No problem at all coming through this way. If you recall, I had a problem in Golden, and I wasn't very elaborate on it. After I got to Golden, uh, I popped up to the Electrify Canada that had recently opened. I hooked up, I talked all brilliantly about how happy I was. It's gonna go fast, but not fast enough to get me to Prince George. But it turns out it wouldn't ramp up faster than 70 kilowatts. It seems to have a connection communication problem with the F-150 Lightning. But why don't we go take a look and see what's happening this time around here in Lethbridge. I'm charging on a 155 designated uh, fast charging unit with my truck. Definitely the F-150 Lightning Flash is just performing well. We've been here for five minutes, so it should be slowing down, but it isn't. And it's doing over, uh, oh, we had our first slowdown, 156. Now we're getting down to where the range typically is for this truck there. It's dropping off now. Starting to get a little warm, but it was ramping far beyond the 155, and it was there for five full minutes. And we've already stuffed, as you can see, a lot inside here. I rolled in with only 15% charge because I didn't want to be late. So I just came all the way down to Lethbridge on a single charge. We're already at 28% from 15. We've already pushed in 18 kilowatt hours in six minutes. So you can see it doesn't take long to jack yourself up, uh, but when you're getting these hyperchargers, even though you may not be getting hypercharger speed, you're gonna pay hypercharger price. It's pretty damn flat here, but there's a lot of wind turbines south. I knew about the Pincher Creek farms, but that's the initiative that took hold it was really moving in Alberta, but they were taking advantage of it. And then it kind of just, I don't know what happened. Maybe it is still going forward, but there was a moratorium for a while when Daniel Smith, the premier, got elected. She put a moratorium on it. It's like, it's, 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 it's a business. It's making money. It's making energy. Things spin around, makes electricity. What's the problem? Anyway, it's nice to see. There's a whole freaking, I feel like I'm, I'm in the future. When I look over there, I feel like, you know, I'm expecting like a Star Trek Captain Kirk or Spock to zip by in the, the shuttle. You know what I mean? I like it. Anyway, it's freaking flat. As I get more south and moving towards Saskatchewan, there's a lot of freaking corn out in that field. Like, 
not acres, we're talking tens of thousands of acres to the horizon of corn. It starts from the highway and then moves off into the distance so I can't see it any further. And, and that's a distance. But you can't get a sense of distance now because it's just freaking flat. So there's no hill to say, oh, it's, oh, look, way off there. You, there's no view because it's just, it's a piece of paper you're driving on with little, you know, bumps. And, you know, there's trees and, and that wind farm is really freaking cool. I probably didn't get it on film. Oh, well, <laughs> you're lost. Come here yourself. I just, I'm, I'm too tired, I'm too, I'm, I'm, I'm too lazy to actually get out and, and move the GoPro. It's filming right now, but I think it's pointed ahead. I only got one of them. If you want me to get two of them, please help. Click that super thanks, make a donation. It, it, everything goes right into what you're seeing. Uh, I love to have a second GoPro. This this thing right here, little thing, beep, beep. I can drive and I can put two, I can put up to seven GoPro on this little fart. And I'd love to have a drone for some of the stuff I'm planning on doing next year. I can't afford it, I can't do it. So any help, I do appreciate, that's my plug. But anyway, I just passed a community called Tin. Before that, there was one called Here. H -E, it's a Dutch thing, I think, it, but it looked a lot like ear. And then there was Chin. I guess a lot better than living in the community of Crotch. Yeah, see, well, you can't see it. Never mind. You can't see it. Not even enough cameras. See? Big freaking cloud. Just a huge cloud. That's, peop that's somebody's topsoil. It's just lifting off the ground. The topsoil is being blown away. This is a lot of clouds of their soil. It's going to grow something next year, just blown off into nowhere. Anyway, we have 131 kilometers to go to Medicine Hat, where I'm crashing. I'm going to work on getting more videos out for you. I'll tell you, it's a tight schedule. We're getting right across the provinces. And then the moment that I stop, I got to start working on editing and I got to do post. And then I got to try to make it entertaining for you. And I got to cut because you've already discovered I'm a blathering buffoon. I, uh, I don't know how to shut up. I love making work for myself. So like 20, 30 hours, I stop at the hotel and I just work like crazy, get it all done, try to get it out, and then, and then the internet goes down. Or there's no, <laughs> there's no internet. It's like, ah, I got it all finished. They can send it out. They're gonna, they're gonna love it. Uh, I can't post it. Stuff like that. I came to Alberta with a lot of preconceptions. I did, and I have to admit that many of those preconceptions were wrong. There is embracing of electrification in the province of Alberta. Depending on which political party is in, things get done in dribs and drabs, but they get done. As I've driven further south, I've seen more solar. You see that haze and gray and blue where color seems to be lost because it's so far away. And off in the distance is an entire field uh, and they've done it with crops and cattle. Every square inch of the land is being used. They're growing, uh, they've got uh, cut lines in between for harvesting hay, and they've got cattle out in the field, and this row upon row upon row of beautiful solar panels. Right on that horizon line are these giants generating a lot of power. And you know, they may sit idle for 50 to 75% of their lifespan, but one rotation, and they're all positioned so when the wind blows in different directions, they're gonna catch it. And they make a lot of power. We can keep that energy for great periods of time when the grid needs it. When people walked into the mountains and they saw these veins of quartz, they went, hold on a second, there's silver and gold in that. Oh, and they looked as galena, you know, the lead and silver in there. So they mined it. And then someone, hey, look, we stuck a hole in the ground and this oil came out and we can use that. We don't have to use whale blubber anymore. There's a market for this. And somebody went, you know, this one spot, the wind always blows. I bet I could make some money making electricity off of this. It's all entrepreneurial stuff. It's all cool. And it's a dance of what we're requiring from the earth and what we're going to take from it and how we take it. I like what I'm seeing. I just passed through the community of Bow Island. And there in the center of town, their centerpiece was what I believe was a 30-foot papier-mâché potato. Tourist draw, 
I'm not certain. I was tempted to stop and take a picture of it because I was just so shocked by its presence. But then I saw this massive industrial building with these huge containers. And I got a funny feeling they're full of potatoes. It's like Mr. Potato Head from hell. I wanted to go put glasses on them. You know, like eight foot paper mache glasses. You put those on the little fuck. I'm turning around. Something I always struggle with is misinformation. You hear that swishing noise? You hear that? Let me show you where that's coming from. And the first thing I wanted to do is look for the countless millions of dead birds and bats. So let's just go take a look underneath the big, massive, each one of those propellers is like as long as a cedar tree. Yeah, it's making, this one right here is making enough to power like a hundred of my trucks. It's a big, huge, slow propeller. We didn't have a problem with propellers on planes, which by the way, kill birds and bats. Let's go take a look. You don't have to find the birds and bats. There's gonna be tons of them. Uh, I don't see any. Uh, birds and bats. Oh, and I'm standing underneath it, and uh, I'm not growing any tumors. Hey, it's not a tumor. I don't seem to be getting cancer. Um, I'm not sure, maybe it takes a while from the large, slow, spinning propeller. Might be something on the ground. Hold on, I might have found some dead stuff. Uh, that's rabbit shit. Seems to be uh, something wrong here because this slow, large, moving propeller is hazardous and noisy and, and damaging. And, I can't smell anything. I can't smell any diesel. You don't see any smog or large plumes of coal dust coming off of them. I'm, there's got to be some negatives. I mean, they're an eyesore. They're, they're freaking ugly. I think they're beautiful. It can all work together, folks. Oil, gas, wind, solar, geothermal. We use energy. We put them in these, we put them in our diesel trucks, we put them in our gas trucks. We use energy, we're human. We gobble up calories, we gobble up jewels. There's crops coming off of these fields, large crops. At the same time, producing a massive amount of energy that's powering cities. Hey, trucked up guys and gals, I am in Medicine Hat, Alberta, my last stop in Alberta before heading into the wilds of Saskatchewan. And I just downloaded my 16th EV charging app. I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna stuff my face, and then I'm gonna sack out, I'm gonna shut up. That'll be a change. See you tomorrow. A couple of you in the comments in my BC portion, my first video on my Canada wide tour, wanted a little bit more geeky information about some of the, the range numbers and the performance numbers, and I'm too damn tired and, and, and lazy to actually round all of that up. Uh, but it's also very, very difficult to actually get it all compiled um, as I go because I'm trying to limit also the size of these videos so you can enjoy them. But here's a number that might come in useful for you. I have driven 4,800 kilometers since I started in British Columbia. Overall, for BC and Alberta, I have averaged 31 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now I believe that that's going to be times four because I've got a battery pack usable, I believe, of 123 kilowatt hours or 131 maximum. So if I pushed it and I trickled into some place and I was running on fumes, I could definitely go far beyond this. But I'm looking at taking that 31 uh, kilowatt hours per hundred and saying, well, I could get 
three times four so I could get 400 kilometers. So the truck's EPA is 515 and you can see the effect of highway. If you're just driving at high speeds, which is exactly what I did, 70 to 75 miles an hour or 110 to 120 kilometers an hour, depending on where I was, that's exactly what happens. And that's why the EPA rating doesn't do that. The EPA rating talks about driving in town and stop and go traffic and mixed. And all these YouTube channels that say, well, look, can't get the EPA, it's because they're not testing it properly. Well, that's about as childish as it gets. But what can you expect, right, from those who fear change so much? So I pull up to my hotel. I don't have the mics in. I'm just about to call it for the night, but I just had to share this with my trucked up peeps. See all that wetness on the ground? That's beer. And they poured it into the hotel's level two charger, and then they put the cap on to short out the input. I'm going to try to dry it out and see if it's still workable, but that's pretty pathetic. We are rapidly approaching the Saskatchewan border, and that brings us to the end of our trucked up stop Canada wide tour, our Alberta leg. We've traveled almost 1500 kilometers across this province, and what I expected to find in Alberta, well, I was shocked with the unexpected. It's time to call it. It's time to take a good serious look at Alberta from an EV truck owner's perspective and give you a verdict. And here it is. I'm surprised to announce that Alberta has earned the trucked up stamp of approval from trucked up EVs, but with some big caveats. And here they are. You can drive on the western arm, the western border of Alberta and BC. And you can go almost up to the Northwest Territories and find fast chargers. But the moment you head east towards the oil patch and the oil sands, tar sands, whatever you like to call them, and you start driving north, you hit a desert. And that's really freaking embarrassing. It's pathetic, actually. And let me explain. Out of all the cities across this great country, any one of them with a population equivalent of Fort Mac has a fast charger. They stand alone as the holdout that doesn't have a single fast charger in their entire city. And why do you think that is? That's called protectionism. They don't want free market economy, I guess, in Fort McMurray. They don't believe in market forces. They don't believe in supply and demand, and they don't believe in competition. They don't believe in what they preach, I guess, because they're practicing a level of protectionism not often seen. They're trying to close off change. I wonder how well that's worked in the past. If you want to travel in that direction with your electric vehicle, you won't be anytime soon. And you know what? Good on them. Let's not give them any of our hard earned money. Let's go spend it in the parts of Alberta that are gonna allow us to get there. But it's not enough to knock them out of the title of what they've earned because you can get to most parts of Alberta and you can get there quite easily. And even though there's large stretches of highway with nothing in between as similar to the one that I'm driving on right now, I can let you know this. There are not only fast chargers, there's a lot of superchargers and there's a lot of hyperchargers and you're not gonna have any problems whatsoever. It would be nice to see some of these companies work together to get one unified app rather than having 16 separate ones on your phone. But I understand that'd be like asking Esso to use a Petro Canada card. But that's got nothing to do with Alberta. That's not Alberta's fault. So as we end this trip, congratulations to Alberta. You're on the road in a big way, literally. And as to the fine work of organizations such as the Electric Vehicle Association of Alberta, that's not about uh, standing off to try to get what they want. There's no us and them. It's all about handshakes rather than showing the hand. They're helping rather than hindering. And they're doing everything, working with industry, working with government, doing the advocacy work that needs to be done to open up Alberta for the rest of the world to come travel here with electric trucks. So thank you to them. It shows, we can see the efforts on the ground. And now it's time to roll into Saskatchewan and see what they have in store for us. Let's go check it out. We're just about to the border. I'm looking forward to it. 
I appreciate you being here so much and sharing this journey with me. Until next time, thanks for watching.